Welcome to the Texas Bar Books Forms tutorial for Word 2007. Once the forms have been installed properly on your computer, when you're in Word and you look at the tabs on the ribbons, you will see one for TBB Forms. When you click this tab, you will see the ribbon for the forms. Included on this ribbon are some utilities for making navigating and editing the forms easier. The first tool we will look at is the Show Instructions tool. When you are in one of the forms and you click Show Instructions, the instructions will show. You can then use Hide Instructions to hide them. The instructions are set to show in red font with hidden text. The hidden text makes it easy to show and hide the instructions. The red instructions give you information about what to do in the form. As you're working in a form, you may want to move from one instruction to the next. Using Next Instruction button on the Texas Bar Books ribbon, to move from instruction to instruction. You can see here as I'm clicking it, the insertion point moves from one instruction to the next, take me through the document, instruction to instruction. By default, hidden text in Word does not print. As mentioned previously, all of the red instructions that you see are also formatted with hidden text. And I can tell this right away because of the dotted lines under the text. If I look at this document in print preview, I can see that it is not going to print any of my instructions. Typically, that is how people want it to be. But in the event that you do want to print the instructions, on the TBB Forms ribbon, you can choose Printable Instructions. You will be prompted that the instructions are now going to print. And now if I look at it in Print Preview, I can see that the instructions will print with the document. That setting will stay on with Word until I turn it off. I can turn it off later by choosing Don't Print Instructions. I'm prompted that the instructions will not print. And if I look at this in Print Preview, I see once again they are not going to print. When you have completed editing the form, you may decide you want to permanently delete the instructions from it. To do this, from the TPP Forms ribbon, just choose Delete Instructions. You will be prompted that you are indeed about to delete all the instructions. To permanently delete them, choose Yes. The program runs through and removes the instructions from the document. At this point, you will notice if you go to your Home tab and try turning on Word Show Hide feature, the instructions are truly gone. Keep in mind that in the future, if you ever do need the instructions back, they won't be in that document once you've saved it. However, you can go back to the original forms and take a new copy of the form. That will still have the instructions in it. There are two tools on the Texas Bar Books Forms ribbon that will alter your Word default settings. The first is Show Instructions. By default in Word, if you turn Show Hide on and off, Hidden text will display when it is on, and you will also see other non-printing characters, such as tabs, line breaks, spaces, hard returns, and hidden text will hide when show hide is turned off. If you use the TBB forms to show instructions when you do not have show hide on, it will show hidden text, but it is not going to turn show hide on because we don't want to annoy you with non-printing characters that you may not want to see. This setting, however, tells Word to show hidden text, and at this point, when I turn Show Hide on and off, the hidden text stays, whether I have Show Hide on or not. The second setting that is altered is the setting to print instructions. By default, they will not print. However, once I say Printable Instructions, they are going to print, and even if I open other forms, and keep working in Word, anytime I happen to have hidden text and I go to look in Print Preview, I see that hidden text is printing whether I like it or not. Now we can use the Hide Instructions to turn the Show Hidden Text setting off, and we can use Don't Print Instructions to tell Word to not print hidden text. But the Restore Word Settings takes care of both of these settings at once. So if I choose Restore Word Settings, it restores Word so that hidden text will not print and it will not display. As you work in the forms you will see text in brackets. This bracketed text is fill-in text. 
When you come to this text, you will need to do one of a few things. Either replace it with other text, choose from a list of options from the text, or decide whether or not you want to keep or discard the text. The next fill-in tool on the ribbon will move you from one fill-in to the next. When a fill-in is bold and aerial like this one, the next fill-in tool will simply move to it and select the text. These fill-ins you need to replace. So for example, on this one, I would type the current date. When I choose next fill-in again, I will be moved to the next fill-in. Once again, this is the type of fill-in I just want to replace. So here I would type the name and address of the client. Here we've moved to another form that has a little more complex fill-ins. In this one, notice the slashes dividing different choices. In this case, if I have my insertion point before the fill-in when I choose next fill-in, it sees my choices and opens a dialog box where I can choose from them. I can select the one I want and choose OK to keep it. There will be some instances where you want to keep more than one of these. If that's the case, you simply click the ones that you do want. Whatever ones you choose will be kept. If you accidentally click one and want to unselect it, click it again. Clicking will toggle the selection on and off. When you come to these choices, you can choose one or more and choose OK. You can say skip to just leave this fill-in in place and move on in the document, or you can cancel out of the dialog box altogether to have your cursor back where you started. I'm going to make my choice, choose OK, and I can see in the document that my choice has replaced the original fill-in. The next few fill-ins in this document are just the replace type. So if I have my selection point here and I start clicking next fill-in, it's going to move me from one to the next. Now typically at this point I would type the response for the fill-in. But if I don't want to right now, I can simply keep clicking next and move from one to the next. The original fill-ins will be left where they were, and later I can just get in front of them and click next fill-in to move to them again. Keep in mind when you have this type of fill-in where the text is selected, you just start typing. You don't have to press delete on the keyboard or click and start backspacing to get rid of the text. You just start typing and it will automatically be replaced. I've moved forward in the document to a place where we have our third type of fill-in. Notice here where it says include if applicable. That describes the information, etc. This set of bracketed text is designed for you to include it if it's applicable or discard it if it's not. When my selection point is in front of this and I choose next fill-in, it puts the include if applicable above it and shows the text in a text box. At this point, I can simply say keep, and it will keep all the text. Discard, it will delete all the text. Skip, to move past it so that I could come back to this later if I wanted to and try again. Or cancel, to just cancel out of this process altogether and be back where I started. I'm going to choose keep text, and you can see that it kept the text but not the brackets or the inclusive applicable. Now I'm going to undo that and choose next fill in again. This time I'll say discard text. And you can see the entire prompt has simply been deleted from the document on my behalf. As I move forward in the document down here, I come to a prompt that's even a little more complex. This one says to include if applicable and then includes some choices. When I choose next fill in, I get the include if applicable. If I choose to keep this text, it will then move me to the sub-choices in this case, from which I can choose one or more options. A few of the fill-ins are unusually complex. For example, here we're looking at one that has both a sub-bracket including slashes as well as other slashes inside the fill-in. When the next fill-in tool comes upon one like this, it will offer all of the text to you in a text box. At this point, you can keep just what you want, or replace it with other text, or type whatever you need in here. For example, I may decide I want to choose attached to this petition, so I will get rid of the rest of this, and in fact, I will also get rid of exhibit number letter and replace it with the appropriate one. Then I can choose Keep Text, and whatever I've typed in here will replace the original prompt. 
Many of the Texas Bar Book forms require a caption. In this example, you can see we have a caption placeholder located towards the top of the document. The caption placeholder is highlighted yellow, and you'll find if you click on one of them, the entire thing selects. When it is selected, you can just start typing to replace it if you'd like. In addition to typing over it, you could also paste your caption in if you already have it typed up in another document. In the event that the caption placeholder is not so simple to locate, it may be much further down in the document, or maybe you're not up at the top of the document, if you click the Locate Caption button on the ribbon, the caption will be located and selected for you. Not all forms include a caption. In this example, I've moved to one that does not have a caption placeholder. If you choose the Locate Caption button when you, there is no caption, you will get a prompt letting you know there is no caption field in the form. In addition to visiting all the instructions and fill-ins, you will also want to visit all the colons in the Texas Bar Books forms. The reason for this is because throughout these forms there are colons where you're going to want to type text after the colon. An easy way to browse from one colon to the next is to use the word Find feature. If I go to the Home tab, I can choose Find, or I can press Control F on the keyboard, and the Find and Replace dialog box comes up to the Find page. I'm going to type a colon in here to tell what to look for and tell it Find Next. Word navigates to the next colon in my document. Now at this point I still have the Find and Replace dialog box up and I could leave it up, type in the document what I want to and keep clicking Find Next, but an easier way to browse without having the dialog box in your way is to cancel out of the dialog box because once you've done a find, Word is set by default to browse by whatever you were looking for. To keep browsing, I can now click the double up and down arrows on my vertical scroll bar, or on the keyboard I can press control page down to browse forward, control page up to browse backwards. Notice as I click the double downs, I move to the next colon. Now in this instance, I need to type the person's name, so I'm going to stop and do that. Control page down on the keyboard or click the double down arrows again to get to the next one. Or if I can see it, I could just click there with the mouse and so on. The tools on the Texas Bar Books Forms ribbon are designed specifically for use with the Texas Bar Books Forms. If you try using them in a document that is not one of the forms, you will get a prompt informing you that the tool is not available in that document.